So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and I've had this iPad mini now for an entire week. I've gotten to play with it, got to test out iPad OS 15 on it, test out the form factor, test out different use cases and I want to create this video not only as a one week later but I wanted to give you guys reasons as to why not to actually buy this thing. Because yes the form factor is pretty cool and there are some added bonuses into having such a small device but for the most part there are much better purchases out there that you can make even in the iPad lineup. So without further ado, Five reasons why to avoid this iPad mini, at least for this first generation. But let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about this iPad mini. Reason number one as to why you shouldn't actually buy this iPad mini, and it's something that I didn't think would be this annoying. The number one thing that's been annoying me the most is Touch ID. Touch ID on the lock button has been terrible. It usually works about 70% of the time, I would say, maybe even a little bit less. And then even when it does work, the way that you actually interact with the lock button, because we're so used to touching the lock button to lock your device, right? To make sure that your screen turns off. So when you go in, and even if you have a MacBook Air or a keyboard with Touch ID on there, even that implementation is better because when I touch the button, even if I press the button down, it'll still recognize my finger unlock my computer and get me to where I need to be versus here that motion is still kind of ingrained in my in my head with touch ID so like touch ID normally I'll, I'll go down and press on the physical button for touch ID and then it'll still let me in with this one you have to like rest your finger on there and it tells you to rest and it takes a second to actually unlock and like I said most of the time or a lot of the time it really doesn't work I have to either put in the passcode or actually lock it and then unlock it or actually just lock it and then do the fingerprint again and the touch ID again. So I just wish that Apple put face ID on here. It could not have been that expensive to add it, especially with the amount of face ID sensors that they've been putting on these iPhones and the volume that they have. So putting face ID on here probably wouldn't have been that expensive. And touch ID, I don't know. And again, touch ID, it just hasn't been efficient for me. There's been too many hiccups on it. Versus face ID, it works 99% of the time, even with a mask on, even with glasses on, even with a hat on, right? In touch ID, you would think that it would help out more with like the mask situation, maybe hat, a beard or something. But again, it's not, it's working way less frequently than Face ID has ever worked. So that is reason number one, Touch ID, just not a fan of it at all. At least not on the, on the lock button. For the MacBooks and the MacBook keyboards, I like Touch ID. So reason number two, reason number two is actually the lack of accessories. And you guys probably noticed that this is the single iPad in the entire iPad lineup that doesn't have pin connectors. And now you're probably gonna say, Fernando, who's gonna go out and buy a $300 Magic Keyboard that's so tiny and so small to fit the pin connectors on the back of an iPad mini? And to that, I'll probably say not many people, but I want the option there, or maybe even the option to have some other accessories on there with the pin connectors. The fact that this doesn't have pin connectors, to me symbolizes that Apple doesn't wanna make those accessories for this iPad. They don't think that people are gonna use this iPad in that manner, in a sit down, computer, laptop type manner, which they shouldn't because this is a 8.3 inch screen, it fits in the hand, right? It's not really meant to be a laptop replacement, it's supposed to be a tablet. But with those three pin connectors being gone, there's a huge lack of accessories, right? The only first party accessory that we saw mainly for this is that folio kind of case that we've seen since 2010 with the original iPad came out. And I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even consider the Apple Pencil 2 being a super nice accessory for this because this iPad, because that Apple Pencil 2 wasn't made 100% for this iPad. It was made for the iPad Pros. This just so happens to be able to use that Apple Pencil. It works great, don't get me wrong, but again, those are the only two accessories that Apple makes that are compatible with this thing. And even if you go on Amazon, there aren't many accessories for this, there aren't many cases out. Yes, I know it's a new form factor and all that good stuff, but there aren't, the, the amount of accessories built for this iPad mini are very, very small. And again, if you wanna get some work done on it, you're gonna have to go Bluetooth with everything. You're gonna have to go Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, get some sort of stand in order to get it propped up and things like that. So again, overall, the lack of accessories is kinda of killer when it comes to this. And I, and I do wish they did put the pin connectors on there because because who knows, maybe some people actually like a full physical QWERTY keyboard that they can type on even though it would be small. There have been smaller mini laptops with smaller keyboard footprints that have worked perfectly fine. So I wonder why Apple just kind of avoided doing that. And I think by removing the pin connectors or not including them, they're just saying like, hey, this is a tablet and that's all it's gonna be. So this next category might be a little bit controversial because this thing is pretty powerful. It's rocking the A15 Bionic. But for me personally, for me personally, this form factor and screen size, the screen real estate, it's just too small for me to get any serious work done, at least sit down at a desk at an office work done. On the go, I'm sure it can do a lot of things. Like I know Stephen Robles, he hosts the actual Apple Insider podcast, and he said that he edited the episode that it came out on Friday fully on the iPad mini. So from a capability standpoint, I'm sure it can run anything that you want it to run, like LumaFusion, like any sort of audio editor, you know, Affinity Photo, Lightroom, all those good things and render it at a decent speed. 
but just the fact that it's so small and compact makes it seem like it's not a real work device. I don't know, it could be a psychological thing, but I tried editing a LumaFusion video on here and then the viewfinder was just too small for me to really want to continue to use it as a LumaFusion editor. So whenever I'm editing actual video, I'm going onto the 12.9 inch iPad Pro to get real work done. For me, this iPad mini has been an absolute content consumption and leisure device. Watch a lot of YouTube, watch a lot of football, a little bit of Netflix, maybe enter some comments on the YouTube studio app and things like that. But outside of that, I have not really used it for any work purposes. So that's my reason number three. It's too small and too toy-like to actually make me wanna use this as a work computer. And then reason number four is actually has to do with the size of this iPad as well. It has to do with the scaling issue. It hasn't been a huge, huge issue, but you can see that there are some scaling issues when it comes to this iPad running iPadOS. iPadOS has never been in this form factor and in this size of a screen. So the fact that they're trying to push the entire iPadOS 15 like ecosystem into this small screen, it's kind of crazy because you can pretty much put like 15 apps on the bottom of your dock. And at that point, the iPad has trouble pinpointing which app you want to click. So you have to be very precise as to where you're pressing your actual finger. And then same thing with some widgets, as you can see with my like stock widget, my, my crypto widget, some of the scaling is just off. You know, things are off centered. It hasn't worked really well. And from a consumption standpoint, you still get all the information there. The information is there. It's just, it doesn't look pretty. Like it needs to be refined a little bit more. And this might actually make Apple create a secondary like iPad OS 15 system for this iPad mini, because again, it's hard to scale something that works with a 12.9 inch iPad, 11 inch iPad, 10.9 inch iPad, and then I think the standard iPad is what, 10 inches or 9.7 or 10.2, something like that. So the fact that they're all under the same operating system and under the same coding system, there have been some scaling issues, especially with a brand new form factor in screen real estate that developers just haven't been you know, exposed to yet. They were so used to that 7.9 inch mini, now the 8.3 is kind of messing everything up. So scaling has been an issue, not from a function standpoint, but from a visual and you know overall feel and look standpoint. And then my last point as to why not to get this iPad mini comes down to price. And if you guys saw my last video, I compared this 2021 iPad mini to the 2018 refurbished 11 inch iPad Pro. The pricing is pretty crazy. So the iPad Pro is still more powerful from a multi-core perspective. It's a almost four year old device at this point. And this has the A15 Bionic versus that one has the A12X Bionic. So from a power standpoint, it's incredible that the iPad Pro from 2018, from a multi-core standpoint and multi-thread standpoint, is still more powerful than this iPad mini with a chipset that's three generations newer. And for that price, you can actually get a refurbished 11 inch iPad Pro from 2018. If you can find it, you can get it for roughly $500 directly from Apple. So for the same price, you can get a 64 gig iPad mini. It'll have the same storage. It'll be a bigger screen. It'll have ProMotion. It'll have Face ID. It still has that awesome uniform and unibody design and the industrial design. So I would recommend going with that Pro over this iPad mini. The only reason you would go with this mini is if you just need this form factor, right? If this is what you want and this is the form factor that you need, you know who you are and that's who this is for. Outside of that, if you just have the option to get one iPad, which is what most people go through, they don't have 27 iPads laying around, I would go with an iPad Pro, a refurbished one. Even a refurbished 2020 model is still less expensive than the 256 model with this. And with this one, if you wanna go full out, you can spend almost $800 getting the 256 gigabyte model with cellular, which already puts you at that M1 iPad Pro 11 inch level. So think about that when it comes to this. Like Apple, for some reason, got away with charging an extra $100 more for the base model without people really noticing. If you guys remember, the iPad mini actually started at $399 about three, four weeks ago. Now it starts at $499. So that's pretty much what it comes to with category number five. It just comes down to price for what you get. And then also what else is out there for that same price, if not maybe a little cheaper or a little bit more expensive, but you get more out of your iPad in that way. So I highly recommend going to the refurbished store, getting an iPad Pro that's refurbished directly from Apple for the same price that you would get this little guy. Yes, it's super fun to use. It's super lightweight. It's very portable. And the iPad 11 inch, it's also portable, but not as portable as this one. I will say my comparison, but if you're only able to get one iPad and you wanna get actual work done on an iPad, go with the iPad Pro. That is my recommendation. But those are my five reasons to kind of avoid this iPad mini, at least the first generation. Who knows what Apple does with the second generation? Maybe they will put pin connectors in. Maybe they will kind of establish more of a, a, a setup and a situation for this iPad mini for more people to have to get it versus like, hey, maybe getting it or it would be nice to get. But let's see what Apple does moving forward. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. And for the most part, I am a fan of this new iPad mini. I'm a fan of the form factor. I'm a fan of for what it stands for because in my opinion, this is a tablet. This is an absolute tablet from Apple as opposed to maybe the iPad Pro. I consider that more of a laptop and desktop replacement because of the power, how I physically use it and things like that versus this. This to me is just a throw around leisure tablet that can get some work done when you really need it to. And overall, 
I am a fan of this, but I did want to point out those five reasons as to why I think there are better options out there in the iPad lineup at different price points, at better price points than this iPad mini, because people forget that if you get this at 256 gigabytes with cellular, you're spending iPad Air and iPad Pro money at that point. And I just kind of wanted to let everybody know that, but that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't freaking hate on me for making this video because I do have another video of five reasons why to get this iPad. And overall, like I said, I do enjoy this iPad, but I'm just, out of that iPad lineup, there's just so many better options out there aside from just this guy right here. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out channel sponsor Paperlike. They should be making the iPad mini screen protector real soon. I know a lot of you guys were wondering about that, but until next time, peace.